You okay, this is, we're now live. Guys, we're now live. We're live on the net. Is anyone in? You this are watching recording. Titanium App Camp TV. Uh, <clears throat> oh.
task uh, when the uh, when the projector doesn't work, or the mic doesn't work, because you have faculty standing in front of the room from 100 students, and all those students that have faculty are so stupid they're not knowing how to get the, uh, the AV system going. Um, so I just took that idea, um, if nothing else, a good little hackathon project to do. Uh, and I mean, I'm probably going to make use of this and uh, skin it for uh, UC. And, uh, Maybe add a couple more features to it when I have more time than 24 hours. <laughs> so um, our team, uh, we broke it off into um, uh, Sean and Rashawn 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 and uh, Quintal. Quintal. Um, they um, worked on the designs. Uh, Quintal uh, drew out the design for us. Um, she came in the morning um, while we worked. In the, or we worked about 12 o'clock at night. Um, but getting more into the app here, um, we pieced it all together. I all had a different old uh, section. And you know what? Uh, I worked in a hackathon uh, last year, and uh, we weren't using uh, all of it. And this made it so much easier to work on the team with all of it. One person could work on the TSS file, one person could work on the uh, controller, one person could work on the uh, view. And that's exactly how we broke it off, and it made the GitHub push and everything really easy. Um, so we get in here, um, you, you, you load up the bat phone, um, got a little information there. Um, you have a, uh, enter your cell phone number here. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'll put my, I'll put my phone in here. Um, All right, you choose the room. This is pulling um, from our actual uh, database table of rooms uh, at, at UC at the College of Pharmacy. So I'm just going to choose uh, that room. Choose a, a problem. Um, so when we get this, we know what it's, the problem area is. We have document humor, DVD player, media site. Um, I'll just say media site. Um, and choose urgency um, and normal. Uh, urgent. Okay, am I talk, talking loud? All right. Uh, so we'll put normal there. Um, this changes colors based on the urgency. So it's a red for uh, urgent, uh, orange for normal, and yellow, I believe, for um, uh, low. Um, we are. What happens after this? Um, we take this and we submit it to a PHP page that we use Amazon Web Services um, to host, um, and we. So that takes that goes to the PHP page. That PHP page is just pretty much a redirect to Twilio, or Twilio um, because it has a key and the uh, authorization token. I'm talking to um, our Twilio expert here. And that was more of a secure way of doing it. So we um, the post goes to the PHP page. The PHP page goes to Twilio, uh, and Twilio sends me the tech a uh, text message. So let's go ahead and submit to Batman. All right, thank you for your response. All right, I'm going to take this. Oh. All right. All right, so we have. All right, so I've been getting. Oh, nothing yet. There we go. All right. So here's my text. So I got a text right there. Um, bathroom problem. Um, so basically, I say, oh no, there's a bathroom problem. So I uh, click on that, and this is what the IT person sees. Um, it's just a little web page here. Um, the phone number on there, the room, the audio. Um, I can say, I'll be right there, or I'll get there tomorrow, which would probably tick them off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to say, I'll be right there. All right? So um, that's message sent. And 
That was, yeah. I, so, okay. so um, you got a text message saying that, uh, put your, yeah, you got a text message saying that, um, don't worry, I'm on my way. I'll be there in like five minutes if I said I'll be right here. I said five minutes because my office was right here. Um, so, I've got lost in flowchart like 20 times last night. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much how it works. Um, the, oh, and one other thing is um, it, uh, it actually goes right into the help desk as well. Um, audio problem. Uh, here we go. There's a ticket that it automatically generated. Yeah, you can just take a couple of things. Six minutes and one minute for question. Yep. All right. Well, 30 minutes for questions. 30 seconds for questions. <laughs> so, it uh, generated a ticket automatically. <coughs> So it put these tickets in here. So I know there's a ticket. So it logged it in the ticket system as well. So user, hey, I need help. Sends it to the tech. They get a text back saying that the uh, tech is on their way. Good. Tech gets a text. It also goes. All right. Uh, question, John. Team number two, come to the front, please. Working with Alpha. Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is it triggerable for different IT, you know, different uh, different to use it? Yeah. Create a separate app for it. Yeah, I mean, it's on GitHub. It's there, and you just get it. Yeah, I think we're going to get it. Of course. Stitched together. Um, 
and Kim is going to talk a little bit more about how the switching is going to be switching. All right. So, so there's a lot of problems with having stuff like multiple users all trying to submit their photos. Just the cameras on the camera phones are largely standardized, so there's no there's no way to control for things like environmental factors or like people who have like shaking cameras and they're trying to take pictures. So I built an algorithm which has all right, um, that's based on just the image. Goodness, you can't see the picture at all. That's really disappointing. Anyway, that's picture of Mars. Um, so uh, what it does is it slowly. All right, it detects uh, important edges and like sharp gradient shifts in, in an image, and then yes, is that a question or a wave? Alright, it detects important features in the image and tries to correlate those features just with a nearest neighbor search to a, a similar but non identical photo. This is an algorithm that's like, it, it holds in different environmental, environmental conditions and different sizes of image because it's like reduced into a feature vector. Um, this is really important because there is, in panoramic image, Generation, there is a significant problem where the center of the image drifts as time goes on. Like, as you as you place more and more photos together, then like small changes, and I can just like a random walk away from a single horizontal image. So, so that that is a um, that was a combined image from two input sources. So yes. This is one. From the yeah, it's fine. And this is that one. And um, what you saw with all those different, um, you can't really see in the the chart image, but you saw where it tries to find similarity in it and it stitches the two images together. Um, so that is kind of cool. the um, actual stitching process. So this is an example of what that would look like with just somebody going out and taking photos of Piedmont Park. So this is your thread. You say, oh, that's really cool. Um, I want to add to to that thread. So you would then go to add photo to thread. You would then take a picture and it would add to that thread and would stitch it together and your photo would now be a part of the overall thread. Um, that way we're not relying on the user to like line up the photo themselves and just kind of dump the photo in front of the thread. So. So that's the gist. Yeah. Questions for our panel? Yeah. Yeah. Did, you actually, did you actually get that wider up? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, we have uh, the back end books on the note, and basically um, she wrote a program that uh, it's all on our server. We were trying to get all the different frames to work together. We were still having a uh, post route was going to be sent to the note server, which then run task command in the system, and then it would then create the image, and it would all be based off of a timestamp, which is what each one of those photos has a timestamp on it. Um, that's what ultimately you would try to write, it's just an image. Yeah. Uh, it, it creates a resulting image. So we got, we have two different parts that were fully developed, so like the front end and the back end, but piecing it together, together was not 100%. Was there some like office job, like two step program or something? Yeah, Graph Lab. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were starting to use Graph Lab, and if there were some problems with that on it. So it is nice because it just relies on like a gradient that you you have a whole set of memory. I'm curious if you want to see the same output. I can't see that I'm familiar with it. Oh, oh. Okay, Mark, you can use this in like slightly different algorithms. So, so Hubble is. <clears throat> So, so the difference between like what I imagine Hubble is using and what I built is mine relies on natural images that has like an, like an interesting gradient space, or like where in the functions that Hubble is trying to match, they're trying to like match points in the light against dark background. It's a different connection. Well, yeah, we also had to like think about well. There are different times of day that you need going in, or just like just have to ignore it. <laughs> but it still creates an interesting image that's you know coming from lots of different people that it would be impossible to do on your own. Yeah. 
Any more questions? Well, these guys are standing in a different spot. Yeah. 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 So, if there's any other spot, that it does stand in All right, team number three, icebreaker. Icebreaker. Okay. So, uh, we're the icebreakers. I'm Sowell, this is Edwin, Malcolm, Sean. We have our fifth member, Lisa. Of course, we should have join us today. So, uh, our app is called Muglet, a party game of facial expression. <laughs> So sort of kind of walking through our flow, we spent uh, about probably the first hour of the session sort of hashing out our idea. I think we started somewhere at a mystery dinner theater game and sort of migrated uh, down a path uh, to finally here at Mugly. And I think our intentions were we wanted a game that was that involved spontaneity, that's fairly easy, and at the, the core of it was fun. And so uh, the way the game works is uh, you load into the game, and then you pick the game room, sort of a thing. Uh, in this case, you know, we've got Spaceball, Animal House, 5 p.m. somewhere and chaos there. And upon selecting a game, what happens is you're immediately prompted <coughs> a theme, right? And then you're supposed to take a picture relative to the theme. And so in this case, you know, the, image, or the theme was you just won the lottery, and so then you take the self picture here. And, and apparently, you know, self portraits are sort of the thing nowadays with Instagram, so it's sort of fit with that. <coughs> and then, good. And then once you did that, is you, um, in, in part of the joining the room, you joined in with other four other members of the game. So in essence, what happens is you are shown an illustration of the four other players, and then they're basically a picker that allows you to pick, associate sort of their theme with their pictures. You're sort of trying to guess. You know, in the case here, you know, one of the options was the O face, right? Is that his O face? And then relatively, of the other people that are fit, that's where the camera is. And once you selected that, you hit submit. And the result was you would be, be able to be, uh, the result would tell you, you know, whether you were right or wrong. So in essence, it's sort of the vision here is you're sitting around with a bunch of friends at a bar, and you walk into a bar, and you load this up, and you sort of play this game, and you sort of go, you know, hey, you know, let's see what a sad face looks like, and sort of interpret it, and then you guess whether or not you're wrong. And sort of makes for a nice icebreaker, and then we're sitting around with a bunch of friends, sort of fun game to play, because different people have different interpretations for different themes, different concepts, and it's, Fairly simple, not too intuitive, uh, not too complex or anything. It can be done fairly quickly. You can sort of jump in and out sort of as you're in the group. So um, I think uh, as part of our development, we focused on iOS 7. Uh, we used uh, ACS, uh, Accelerated Cloud Services. So um, I think I covered pretty much everything very quickly. So, right. so just a quick demo of what we could accomplish. We didn't actually you know, finish the whole thing, but the idea was to get the concept that we created that we show you. So you select the room that you mentioned, and you take a picture from yourself um, on the skateboard you're talking in the gallery and get the emulator. Uh, as soon as you select that picture, you have a timer going um, to continue, and then you'll let the people select the actual, what, guessing what type of page they're going to So having a baby. Having a baby in this case, um, of course, the screen that we missed was the actual content that was right. So that's marketing. Right? Question? Yeah, I was first. Sorry. So that's the idea, just to see it going. You keep going. So you go into a room and you get you get points. Yeah, we envisioned a bad system of points, and that's that. Yeah. So, quick question. Well, that was the thought. It was a drinking game. Right. Long and round. If you could have people opt in to agree to have the the face expression and the tag. And then have some license so that uh, computer vision uh, researchers could actually use that. That would be huge for machine learning uh, because that's a, that's a fantastic emergent data set. I mean, that's the same how you want to do it. Like the idea is that they're like hilarious big ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a chef. 
not the most okay. useful for like checking that list. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We will tell you a little top line that. <laughs> Number four, everyone. All right. Uh, uh, we are team four. Uh, I'm doing this. Um, we decided to do an app that's kind of been messing around our brains for two years now, actually. Um, decided this was the perfect time to get into it. Um, we called it Packer App. Uh, it's up to help uh, on moving day. You're uh, packing up your boxes and trying to figure out what needs to go where and, and stuff like that. So uh, basically, what we did was um, built out an app. So what it does is it um, scans QR codes. So we were thinking that if you uh, QR code sticker pack, they could then peel off, stick onto your box, and then you'd be able to enter the contents of that box through the app. Um, so that um, so we got a code here. I'll hold it up so we can see you. Okay, so it's, uh, this one's bedroom one. It'll actually come up on the screen here. Oh, okay. So when it scans. <laughs> I'm not going to do it this time. Yeah. <coughs> There you go. So that's the bedroom uh, box. It has uh, sheets in it and uh, pillows. Um, so that way you can uh, find, and <clears throat> we actually set it up so that you can come in here and look at your code. So we have uh, all of our codes that we've scanned. Uh, we have bedroom one, Derek's bag, my bag, uh, kitchen one, and then Ty's bag. Um, and so you can actually see the contents of these uh, boxes or bags just by clicking on and going into it. Um, or you can get actually a list of all the stuff, and then that way you can kind of scan through and say, oh, where's that fountain pen? Oh, yeah, it's in Derek's bag. So then you know where it is. So you can actually do that for your boxes. If you're like, I need the toaster. Where's the toaster? And you actually can go find it and find out which box it's um, So we actually uh, built out the app with Alloy. Um, using, uh, it's actually linked up to a server right now. so. We're running it on all of our phones, and they're all connected to the same database, so they're all able to access the same content. Um, we're using the REST API uh, plugin for Alloy, and then uh, what else do we have? Anything else you want to scan for that? Oh, yeah, we do have an Android version going too. It's not as pretty necessarily, but here, I'll do it on He's going to scan his bag over here. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right here, I can see it. Talk. <clears throat> Layers of the animal. There you go. So there's Ty's bag. He's got the. Got the trophy in his bag already, so. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
and then we have items that we can add into that R code to the R code zone. Oh, yes. Um, what would be a really cool feature is that if you take a picture of what's in the Yeah, that was one of our that was one of our features that we didn't quite get to. Yeah. Add yeah. yeah, from the app is our first feature. We had, a big, we had a big list last night that kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah. Is there another question right here or comment? Anybody else? Um, yeah, like one more question. How do you connect the three of you to the scanner? Or how do you see it like that? Uh, how do you? Well, three counts. How do you get three counts? Oh, so yeah, right now it's actually. We're all three dumping to the same database. Right. Another feature we might add was actually we're a kinetic group. So you can have family members that would all be attached to that same group, and then you'd be able, your wife would be able to check stuff in, and you'd be able to check stuff in. Um, and then nobody else would be able to see what's in your account. Okay. All right, team number five. Story Sorry, Use the mic. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Devin Weaver, and uh, I'm Robert Joseph, and um, we are StoryTap, and we are interactive stories for everyone. And um, we're offering 10% of our company for 100,000 <laughs> <laughs> started as um, an idea through uh, SEMA development in which they are a company, a nonprofit company that is uh, trying to help other nonprofits make money. And so it started out as an app to make money. And the app um, is supporting another nonprofit called YouthSpark that deals with human trafficking and sexually exploited kids. Now the app isn't about any of those things. It's about everybody has a story to tell. And this app allows people to tell an interactive story. So it's, I like to think of it as YouTube on steroids. So you can create a story uh, with different chapters in HTML, and then you have uh, transitions between those chapters. And we've got several transitions. We've got the next transition going from one chapter to another. We've got a random transition where you go randomly between things. We've got a, um, a transition called password that we didn't finish, but it will allow you to give a clue and then type in a password. It won't allow you to go for it. Uh, and then we have one that we developed, or um, Devin developed in the 15 minutes that we had between time, um, where you can shake and go from one transition to another. The idea is to have other developers continue to develop more and more transitions and create more and more stories. So um, we have. Uh, <laughs> Take it harder. <laughs> um, we, uh, we have um, so what we have now is we have two stories in there. Um, the first story is, and we're going to show it on the um, emulator um, too because it works on both the Android and the iPhone. The first story um, you can create graphics, you can create a rich uh, media presentation. Um, and then as you um, go through the transitions, you can even have interactive transitions. So you can have uh, bump uh, phones, you can add a uh, beacon, um, so when you get in close proximity with somebody else, it does a transition. Um, you can add geofencing. And so we see this being used in a lot of different uh, arenas. You can think of a teacher maybe uh, creating uh, a story where in different places you go to, you can, um, actually um, have different parts of a history lesson, you know, unveil. Or you can um, have friends that are reading the story together and bumping. Um, the path through stories can also be changed. There can be branching. So you can have random branches and you can have other uh, if then branches. Um, we are, um, the idea is that we are the engine and um, everybody else can provide stories for, for it so that um, um, we, we actually give people an opportunity uh, to tell fun stories as well as tough stories. Um, it 
there are any developers that would like to, you know, do a transition or be a part of the project, um, just see me. Um, we would love to have you on board. Uh, any questions? Is the idea that people contribute pieces of the story, so like you start off the story? Is that um, the idea is that somebody offers a complete story, and the story has different it has different branches. But it's sort of like remember the the comic books in which you can say, well, if you're this, then you go down this path, and if you're that, you go down this other path. So you can you can actually branch down different paths, and then we're going to add. Um, the ability to do branching. So if you maybe bump and you're at a particular location, you go down one branch, and if you bump and you're at a different location, you go down another branch. So it's a way of not just having the stories be one, you know, one way, like in YouTube, where you're just watching something, but to actually create some interactiveness with, um, uh, with as little or as much interactiveness as the author wants. Someone creates a story, and someone else can go in and branch it. Well, if someone creates a story and they put branching in there, as you go through and read the story, you'll be able to, or it'll either randomly branch depending on what the author wants, or can lead you through a branch. So you can't, you can't create your own branch. No, at least not right now. The, the idea too is to get this out there and then have other people, you know, come up with ideas like that. So it can be collaborative stories where you know you, you start branching, or you can create, you know, along one of those same lines. You can have you know different people create another chapter to the story, so kind of walk through it, create a, a larger story. Any other questions? And this is just uh, an example of uh, the button at the top, and the way the and it, like I said, it works on Android and iPhone. And getting those to work on both is not a simple feat. <laughs> Thank you, we've got a little bit of time left, so we'll just stand up here at the same time. Next team, Martin, come up. For those of you who don't know me, I'm down from my accent from the UK. Uh, I'm a freelance Italian uh, developer, uh, consultant working in uh, London. And um, I thought, uh, you know, there's an app that I've had in my mind to, to write for quite some time, but you know, clients get in the way. So when I so when I started flying uh, over here on Friday, I thought this is an ideal time. So I did cheat a little. I started on the aeroplane, uh, but hey. You know, you only get four hours before the battery runs out, so it wasn't too cheap. Um, and what I was kind of thinking was, was it be two things. One, it'd be interesting to have something that I can show to clients, say, you know, this is the sort of things that you can do with the Titanium framework and the tool chain, and just what you can do in a couple of days. That's one thing. And the other thing is, um, you know, I wanted to build an app that solved one use case. So those of you who don't recognize this, this is Glastonbury, 2013. 150,000 people in those fields. And some of those people are my friends. I have not got a clue where any of them are. So I wanted to write an app that let me figure that out. Okay, so, uh, so we've written an app uh, uh, called Where Are You? So let's, uh, let's fire it up and have a look. Uh, so 
Okay, so so the idea of the app is that you uh, you log in using Facebook, and um, having logged in, we'll uh, connect over uh, a Node.js, uh, and we'll make a call inside of Node.js, find all of your friends uh, that are within one kilometer radius uh, that are using the app, and. Uh, just to kind of make it a bit fun, I thought what we'll do is we'll use some augmented reality to do that. It's a bit strange to do, so let me try changing it that way around. Uh, so if I spin around the room, we should hopefully see some. Yeah. Well, Stephen's moved a little bit, but Stephen logged in uh, a little while earlier. Of course, the GPS isn't perfect inside of the room. Um, if I tap on him, There we go. When I tip the phone down now, I get a little arrow so I can follow them <laughs> to show me how to get to it. That's it. Uh, run the platform. Run the uh, Got it running for those you want to see it runs here on uh, runs here on uh, a cheap little Android device as well. So great. Send that. Send one use case to solve. So there we go. So any questions? Yeah. Did you use like a special module? I saw like there was a little trial like watermark thing. There is. I've used a commercial AR module. I've got a client that uh, uh, digress for a few seconds, but I've got a client. She wants me to build uh, a an app that runs on an iPad uh, that she's going to to lease to uh, to fine art dealers uh, and for shows. So the app is usually expensive, not commercial. The idea is you just take the iPad. So I like that photo, hold the iPad up to the photo, the AR picks up and recognizes the photo and lists all the info about it and then provides a picture. So, so that's the contract I've got. So we're using a commercial uh, module uh, called WikiJude. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to do over the weekend was figure out how to use it. So, uh, so I've used it this way. So this weekend you created the module for Android and iOS? To no, they do have some modules. Okay, then. I was going to say, you didn't cheat because you took uh, four hours and helped us uh, the other day. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, yeah. You got that time back. <laughs> sure, thank you for that. Okay. <coughs> um, if, if they just have to have the app running in the background, so they don't have to actually have it open, or do they need to open it up periodically? Uh, well, that's a good point, isn't it? Uh, for Android, though, it runs in the background. Uh, for iOS 7, uh, it's a known issue. It just collapses after 10 minutes and stops working at the moment. But that's something that these guys are working on. But if they, I mean, a lot of times when you're trying to find a friend, they know you're trying to find them. So they would, they would scope yeah, they would. And, and, the, and the, what I didn't have time to implement, but I was going to, was I was going to list those people online. So it, it's a bit naff looking around. But the other thing I ought to mention as well is when you hold this thing up, the actual image. Oh, there's, there's Tommy, because Tommy logged in earlier as well. Um, but we don't have his image because he's hidden that on Facebook. The, the, uh, the little uh, box that we've got there gets smaller the further away people move. Uh, so it's going to be kind of interesting, but we're also going to add another view. I was adding another view that simply listed all the people and the distances. Maybe you could like, you know, have a button that says, send Tommy an SMS reminding him to open it up so that I can find it. Yeah, yeah. Good. Potentially do that if, if, he's, uh, if he's not online. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Team number seven, Polonium. Okay. Can we share the screen? Can we project it? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's cool. We'll lose that. Actually, just have it right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> well, I'll start uh, talking for uh, while this is setting no, up. No, 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 no. no? Okay. All right. Well, I won't. <laughs> you stripped about like, seven minutes. I know. Seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. I know you have plan. <laughs> well, since we're the last people, we can kind of go over. <laughs> yeah, we are having to do some um, hacking here to uh, get ourselves online. Just press OK. You have to log your dash. You have to do that? Yeah, here. yeah. Um, the reason why we're doing this is uh, my computer is pretty archaic, so we have to use something that has EGA. So, uh, because 24 hours ago, uh, all none of us right here standing here has never touched titanium code in ever in our lives. Uh, not to mention, pretty much the first time we've actually built a mobile app. So bear with us. Our, our, our graphics are very crude. Uh, very UIs are very fundamental. But the, the point that we wanted to kind of uh, make in the app was to build something for text messages that is manageable by business. Oh, and there are a lot of technologies, communication technologies that's been out there right now uh, that were meant to be personally used, uh, such as Facebook, Twitter, anything like that. And more and more business now are using text messages to connect with their customers, clients, and uh, for various things, sales, support, whatever you name, whatever you say. Um, but there isn't really any tool for a team of PRs or a team of salespeople in the business to be able to manage all the incoming and outgoing conversations that happens in the SMS. So we want to build a tool uh, that, that we kind of gather all that in a single identity uh, let's say your main business phone number, and be able to assign these thing, uh, these conversations, individual conversations, to a specific team member, and be able to carry that conversation out, making sure that that individual will be the person who's responsible for that one person uh, going. Now it's almost like Hootsuite. I don't know if you anybody who knows Hootsuite. Yeah, it's like a Hootsuite for SMS and. Um, again, uh, completely crude and un, uh, incomplete, actually. But this is, um, um, we've actually built, uh, you know, we're really good at building the back end side of it, not, not the uh, front end side. So we've actually built the entire uh, rest of, uh, on the Rails app uh, to, to support this um, application uh, so that uh, tying with the Twilio side of things um, and uh, uh, AWS uh, at least tried, all, all, almost all of them, um, to to get the application running in a, um, a, a API-based and RESTful side. So we built the RESTful uh, UI to have um, text messages coming through. And you'll see uh, these are random numbers you might see. But uh, it's actually a phone number and a timestamp. And a few action calls that happens here. Um, kind of like CRMs, you're able to escalate these um, uh, some of the things, uh, features that we weren't able to um, fully keep, um, uh, implement where um, escalations, uh, sign, the ability to refer to another team members and, and be able to uh, kind of assign to other team and say, I'm not an expert of you know, uh, this specific product, so I'm going to refer to you to another person. And also to close, uh, uh, close in, uh, the, the conversations for our product purposes. When you go into it, again, very crude uh, UI for it. Okay. Uh, to come up with, it's really crude, right? Uh, to come up with basically a text message. But what our intention was to have is uh, ability to have um, archival of who and what team member of our uh, of the company uh, is uh, interacting with them. It could be multiple people interacting with them. And in real time, be able to see whether or not that person or that customer has been uh, replied to in a timely manner. Um, here, you can, uh, we are actually tied into the whole text messaging, so you can actually um, there's Bulgarian up there if you, if you guys ever uh, can uh, <laughs> translate any of those. But uh, you know, you, you are able to send text messages uh, and then receive text messages through Bulgarian uh, in, in that sense. Um, 
again, we, we, we're not quite, okay, well, there it is. Um, so we're not quite there yet, and we have only, uh, was able to kind of really grasp uh, the uh, telonium side of it, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, titanium side of things uh, this morning. We've been uh, kind of going through the whole all night, um, burning on that candles uh, out on the second floor to uh, try to figure this out. And um, uh, we really definitely want to um, continue doing um, our development, obviously not this group, but um, in, in Telonium to kind of see if we can get this application up and running. What are the different actions? Uh, uh, one is to um, uh, to escalate. Or, uh, so so yeah, if you know that they are VIP or if they need, really need an, another attention, and uh, you're essentially managing it to make sure that you put priority uh, on certain conversations. Uh, the second one is kind of a sharing thing um, button, so you can actually share it to another person or assign it to another person. And the third cog is uh, just kind of making internal notes and things like that. Uh, one of the things we kind of uh, <laughs> decided to put in, um, this doesn't have it, but uh, left, right, uh, for inbound. But we also wanted to make uh, certain things like the center ones uh, was supposed to be internal links that we can actually put in there as part of the um, conversation. So uh, let's say you're handing off to somebody and you don't really want to put it out there somewhere that where the client can see it, but you're able to kind of put that internal notes that other team members will be able to see. So for, for assigning, closing, you can just put internal notes that everyone everyone in the company can see. And uh, you know, like, well, just do this, this, or like, hey, you take care of this because of that. And the client can't really see that, but you can tell this right there in, in a time context. So um, yeah, I think there's many use, use cases to this. The two like that we quickly came up with was uh, maybe like a taxi company where you can just text to, to the company and have them pick you up. They can text you back, hey, we'll be there at this time. So it'll take you five minutes before they get there. And another is uh, waiting in line at a restaurant instead of like calling in and going there and you get the buzzer and you can just feel that over text message. Those are two two cool pieces of stuff. Any other questions? All right, really uh, appreciate it this time, and, and thanks for all the experts uh, who really helped us uh, uh, in the last one, four hours uh, in doing this. Thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. Uh, let's give all the hackathoners a big round of applause. Uh, there's some great apps. Uh, I look forward to downloading some of them soon, right? You guys are going to finish these apps and get them out of the store, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can I get a yes? yes. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, so uh, before um, we send the judges off, what we'd like to do is, uh, where's Mr. Feather? Uh, can we get a picture of the judges over, over here? And then we would like a picture of all the hackathoners up here as well. And then everybody who's wearing a tie up camp t-shirt uh, in a picture, please. Uh, we're going to send the judges off to deliberate in just a second once we get their picture. <laughs> There is one, it's invisible.
Oh, okay, while the judges are off making their decisions and going through the apps, thank you guys, it would be awesome. But can we have everybody that was in a hack team, we want to take a group picture of everyone, all the teams up here now. So if you participated in a hack, part of a team, can you please come up here? We just want to grab some pictures. Thanks. Sure, I'm I'll do that now. No, I can't do that now. There might be beers left, and there are some drinks. I'm sure there's some food.
It's on the helm. Uh, do the, uh, the uh, show dashboard, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's the page like. just fails a lot. Like, apparently. Yeah, it's still fail. trying to. Oh, it failed? Well, oh, because you're supposed to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you can see that one. I don't know if you can see that one. I don't know if you can see that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's time to turn the light down. We're going to close them and get reopening. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. I think this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Hey guys, if you're wondering why I haven't sent an email yet, it's because my laptop is written for example, the judges, so I can't email anybody. So you should have received the AWS uh, email with the, uh, the Git, Git and AWS. How's it No, the Twilio code, the Twilio and AWS codes I sent out last night. So if you just reply to that email with the pictures from your hack, that would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Oh, I guess it's um, uh, dark sign or not Oh, you're in the
So we will start with third place. Can we get some drum roll, please? All right, and number three, third place, we have the backbone. Come on up, guys. So, for participating in the hackathon and winning, you have won. Okay, guys. For winning, you uh, get a leap motion. You get a Chromecast. You'll get one thousand dollars in Amazon credit that you can share amongst you. You'll get a Git uh, GitHub bronze plan, which you can use. Um, and if you want to set that up, I'm sure we can do something. But let's talk about that later. And each of you will get $10 in either Amazon, iTunes Store, or Google Play credit. Wow. Cool. Thank you. Don did a great job. Um, he, uh, he, and Don, you came all the way down from Cincinnati, right? Yeah. So it was worth it. You, you have $1,000 worth of Amazon credits now that you can mine some Bitcoin. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> second place, drum roll. And in second place, we have. Where are you? But Martin actually came all the way from. Uh, from Lancaster in the north of England. In the north of England. Yeah. Right. The hill country. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the judges thought that um, Martin was able to put together the app uh, pretty quickly. He had uh, some great features in it. They thought it was really like practical, something that basically you could put out onto the store, mm -hmm. and it would be something that people would actually use. So I can see a few million people downloading that myself. So. All right. All right. So, Ken, tell Martin what he has won. So, Martin has won a Nexus 7, a Chromecast, a GitHub Silver Plan, and two thousand dollars worth of Amazon credit to use amongst yourself. Thank you. Martin doesn't have to share it. No, that's not true. That's a lot. Okay. On to the grand prize winner. Drum roll, please. And in first place in the Thai App Camp Second Edition Hackathon is Code Historia. Uh, the, the judges uh, like the algorithmic application and math and stuff like that. All that nerdy act stuff, right? Um, uh, they also thought that it was a practical application, uh, one that uh, would be used by folks. Uh, they liked that they were able to pull, pull everything together and get most of it done by now. So, all right, so give those guys a hand, and Ken will. And will uh, tell us what they want. So, as our first place winners, you have won an iPad Mini, Ooh. a Chromecast, GitHub Gold Plan, three thousand dollars worth of Amazon credit to share amongst you, and of course, ten dollars of Amazon credit or iTunes or Google Play Store. So, well done, guys. Okay, so um, so so if you participated in the hackathon and you didn't win, you're not. Uh, everyone who participated and has not already won a prize uh, will also get uh, ten dollars in iTunes, Play, or Amazon gift card credit. Okay. Have a great. Thank so. you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, who who just won the iPad Mini? I have a hacksaw in the back. We can cut it up into three pieces so you guys can hold it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Whoever says no actually gets it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick question. Um, all right, so. <laughs> Right, so uh, we're, we're going to close up shop now, uh, but we would love it if a few people would stay and help us clean up, get all the chairs in. Um, right, and, and one last thing we want to do uh, before folks start leaving is if you're wearing the Thai AppCamp t-shirt, please come to the front, or how about if, if they're wearing the Absol Raider t-shirt? No? Okay. Can't say <laughs> so, uh, uh, if you're wearing a Thai AppCamp t-shirt, please come to the front, and Mr. Feather will take a picture of us. Uh, and again, we would we would love it if you would stay. If a few people could stay and help us kind of break down and clean up and stuff, uh, because Cat and I aren't actually making any money off this, so we're on, off the clock. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, thanks, guys. But uh, we are doing Thai App Camp Three, which will be in Europe be sometime spring to summer next year. And we'll, would you want us to run another one of these again? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll get working on that straight away. Uh, but thanks, guys. If you are the Thai app camp guys, um, if you want to come up and take a picture, but we have some special accelerator t shirts that were very generous in giving us those very new style shirts. We have a very limited edition of those. And so, you guys who are wearing Thai app camp t shirts, potentially you might all get one. So, thanks, guys. Oh, one last thing uh, we want to uh, thank Accelerator uh, for coming out. Uh, presenting, uh, sending half the development team here to, to help out with this. <laughs> uh, that's okay. We appreciate everybody coming down. Uh, and it was great to have Jeff down, of course. Uh, so, oh, and so one final, final thing. Oh, and of course, we'd like to thank Amazon Web Service, Blue Fletch Consulting. Is anyone from Blue Fletch here? Rick was here yesterday, but they were supposed to send a bunch of folks, but anyways. Uh, and Vietnam was a sponsor. We thank them for donating. And then uh, are the Gulfstream folks still here? No, they left away. They left away? Oh, okay. So they, they flew away. Right. Uh, Gulfstream, uh, Twilio, Kevin also came down from Twilio. Thank, uh, thank Kevin and Lucina. And one final, final thing. So for uh, at the next F camp, which is going to be in Europe, everyone email Kent and say we want to have it in Dublin, okay? <laughs> Right. Oh, my shoe would be All right. Thanks for coming, guys. I can't have t-shirt. Where should you come to the front for a photograph? I don't know. Well done, man. That's great. Good job. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We are now going to stop recording. Um, we hope you enjoyed the show. I, tie Up Camp is coming back to a city in a country near you. So is Kevin Winery. Say he needs to come to the hat camp. Uh, we have some great crew. We've got Pratik helping and so amazing, amazing experience. So cheers. I'm going to stop broadcasting now. <laughs>